Here we are at day one, experiment one, Bonzer Boomerang. This experiment has a lot of pre-prep um, that needs to be done if your children are young or if you have many children. Uh, the reason is, is because you have to use a glue gun on this, okay? So what you're gonna do first, you're gonna have a template in your kit and you are going to attach a stack of five here where it's and it'll say under there and then a stack of three of these craft sticks on this side and you'll notice there is a one a two and a three here this is telling you your order that you are going to put down your actual sticks to make your frame okay we're going to put the first one down over where it says one then you're going to put a dab of hot glue right in the t in the center where they're all going to meet Put down the second one, push that into that glue. Then you're going to put on another piece, another squirt of hot glue from the hot glue gun there and put on the third one over that. Now, what these stacks are doing here is they are lifting up the edges of your frame so as to make a dihedral angle, uh, which is going to keep this, um, this boomerang coming back to you. And so when you're finished, it's going to look like this. If you can see this on the table, you see that it does not sit flat. That's that dihedral angle for us. Now, it's important that the kids know which end is, or which side is the top side. So you can take a sticker, any kind of sticker, or you can even just take a marker um, and just put some sort of a mark right there in the center so that the kids know that this is the top. We want those uneven ends coming up, not going down into the table. We want them coming up, okay? So top side there. So once again, that's your pre-prep, part of your pre-prep. Now you have even more. So what we need to do next is cut cardstock to make the airfoils. So what I did is I just alternated colors of cardstock you can use all the same color, you can use white, you can use whatever you have, whatever you would like. Um, so you cut these to the size that is um, recommended in the book. And what we need to do now is to bend these into airfoils. So they're gonna make that lift, just like an airplane wing gives it its lift. You want to put this tongue depressor, just this is an extra tongue depressor that the kids will have and leave just, I don't know, a millimeter, maybe two at the very bottom. And you're going to bend this up and over. Now you want to avoid putting a hard crease here because we want it to be a little bit bowed to give it that, um, that airfoil. Now we did have some suggestions that could help you out with this. Some people had suggested that we tape before we bend it. So I'm gonna show you what that would look like. So if I put some tape on there before I bend it. Also, another, uh, another tip is with our older children, we let them build their own airfoils, but with the younger kids, we pre-folded um, them. Okay, so now I'm gonna bend that over and it's already gonna just go right onto that tape. Okay. So you could have either bent it and then taped it, or you could have put your tape on first and you've made your airfoil. Okay, so we're gonna have three airfoils and our frame. Now, this is the most important part if you want your boomerang to work. You will note that what I'm telling you to do is not necessarily what you see in the image in the book. Uh, there is an error there, I apologize for that. If you look at these airfoils, there is a rounded end, there is a short piece of cardstock, and then the top of the wing is longer. So if you were to take your hand and your hand, this could represent the longer piece, your thumb could be the shorter piece. If you are a right-handed child, you are going to put your airfoil on just as it would be like this on your hand, okay? And then I'm holding it like that with my 
frame up, I'm going to slide this right onto my frame, okay? Again, I'm right-handed, so I'm going to do the longer wing on top, the little one, the pocket here at the pocket of my hand, and slip it on, and do the same thing again for the third one. Okay, my pocket's here, I'm done. And there I have, ooh, cheeky. There I have all three of those on. Now, if you look at the underside, that's when you're going to see where the folds are. And this is the part that they're trying to show you in the book that is incorrect. They have one of these turned around this way. You don't wanna do that, okay? So then what you would need to do is just to have the children um, apply some tape there to each of the airfoils so that they don't go flying off when you fly your boomerang. Okay. And this is a right-handed boomerang. If your student or your, your um, child is left-handed, they would have put their airfoils on using the left hand going on this way, all the way around, left hand, left hand, left hand, with the center, the top up. Now, to throw these, there's a little bit of an art to throwing these. Um, it's kind of like a flick of the wrist, but not straight up and down, okay? For a right-handed person, you're gonna take it to like the one o'clock position, like if this was 12, this would be one, if, from my point of view, and I'm gonna flick it, okay? They really do work. <laughs> and then for the left-handed one, yep, this is a left-handed one. A left-handed person would be at the 11 o'clock position from their viewpoint. Flick it that way. And theirs would go this way. And there you have it. Moving on, experiment number two. Experiment number two of day one, we have the fossil handprint. Now you can choose to either do a, an, an entire handprint or just a thumbprint, or you may even have something else that you want to print. Um, so each student is gonna start with some clay of some sort. I have here, what I'm holding is just some modeling clay. You could also use this air dry clay, really, just have some clay, okay? I have not found one that wasn't successful. So if the child flattens this out and they can flatten it out however much they want and you know you can make it be larger or smaller. Say if I just wanted to do my thumbprint, okay? Then I would just go to the middle and I would push down really hard to make a thumbprint, okay? Then the plaster of Paris that you're going to put in there, um, to make that, you may actually wanna wait. This is gonna have to sit for a while so the kids aren't gonna take this home this day. So make sure they write their name on the plate. You might wanna wait until after the class has left to pour, to pour the plaster. Um, depends on how large your class is. So it goes together in a ratio of two, one part water to two parts of plaster. So I've already poured some plaster out into a bowl, so I thought it would be easier than doing it there. And we have two scoops of water, so I'm gonna put in four scoops. Oh, look at that, I just spilled a little. I'll have to clean that up. So this one is gonna be a little messy, so be ready for that. If you don't wanna be messy, I'll show you another option here in a minute if you wanna skip this experiment and try another. I do find though, if you mix it together in a Ziploc bag, then when you're done, you just throw the bag away. So less mess right there. So I'm just gonna mix it all together in my bag. And then once it gets all mixed in, I'm just gonna pour it here into my print and then let it set up, okay? 
if you wanted to substitute, um, this is enough, this is one that we did at our VBS. Um, it's flipped constellations. It's not going to be in your book, but if you watch this video, it's going to explain um, how you can do this one. So what I took here is I got some um, poster board that was black on one side. Um, you could use a piece of cardboard and just put some black construction paper inside, something that would make it look like the night sky. Um, this one is to show the kids that from the Northern Hemisphere, you can see the Big Dipper. And from the Southern Hemisphere, you can see the Southern Cross, but you can't see the other, you, you can't see them, you can't see the Southern Cross from the Northern Hemisphere and vice versa. Okay, so what we did with this one is we would bend it so that a little globe would fit in there. We would put a word, this one says angel, this one says love, we had all different words in there. And with the word upright, we would put the Big Dipper. Then when the word was upside down and backwards, we had the Southern Cross, okay? So if you mount a little globe such that when your word was upright, the United States was up. And then when your word was upside down and backwards, Australia was up. Now in Australia, they can see the Southern Cross, but their constellation was flipped and backwards from what you would have had up here, which the constellation I'm speaking of is the word. <laughs> it's not a real one. Um, but that's one that you could do instead if you, if you wanted something extra to do. Okay.